Yar. What is that Logitech device? It looks like some kind of spyglass. But the size and shape are all wrong. Hmm. It looks like it's recording or something. Filming me, perhaps. Well then, let's put on a show. Good afternoon and welcome back to my messy workbench. Uh, <laughs> today I've got a little LED torch that I'm going to look at and try to repair or do something useful with. Anyway, um, I got this from my dentist. Uh, that's not as weird as it sounds. He likes to give out free promotional things with his business name and everything on them. So um, this torch was quite neat. It's nice and small. It's got a nice hefty keychain thing on it. And it was quite bright and pretty cool. Nice clicky switch. The only problem is it obviously doesn't work. Now it actually did work when I first got it and it was really bright. And I thought, hey, this would be great for inspecting electronic things when I'm, you know, trying to repair stuff and do other things like that. But unfortunately, the LEDs started flickering on and off and eventually died completely after a few days. So I don't know what happened here, but um, it's not that great. So I'm going to have a look at it and see what I can do. So at this point, I'll just tear down the torch and we'll see if we can fix it and find out what's wrong with it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the LEDs that are faulty because one of them started flickering on and off and the other two um, failed afterwards so I don't think it's going to be the switch that's faulty or anything like that. Um, the end cap just unscrews which is fairly standard and it's quite nice because it's not going to fall off easily or anything like that. Um, inside there are three LR44 cells and the um, rest of the assembly is where it gets a little tricky. Well, not really tricky, but you need to know what you're looking for. Um, you can't take the end cap off from the outside. Well, you might be able to, but you'd risk damaging it. I found it was better to poke it out from the back. And you can get a screwdriver in there, a little thin screwdriver. Now, there's um, you probably can't see this because there probably isn't enough light. But underneath the switch, the um, switch assembly is in here and underneath it is a little bit of plastic that holds it into the body of the torch. So you can actually push that little bit of plastic out or you can push the LEDs out first. Um, I'm just going to try and push the LEDs out first. Okay, that's not going to work, but let's try with the plastic bit instead. Okay, it's a bit tight. So that should get it. There's a black piece of plastic that sits underneath the switch. There we go. Okay, um, you can see it there. I'll just push it out completely. Yeah, so this little bit of black plastic, it's um, tapered on one end, and the tapered end goes in this way. It goes in that way from the front. Um, you can also take the switch out if you push it down and then just gently wiggle it out by pushing with a screwdriver or something. Yeah, and obviously I've disassembled this before, but I never actually got around to trying to fix it, so I'm going to actually do this in this video. Now, the LEDs are just three white LEDs, and they're on a little circuit board, and they're all in parallel. Which is a bit silly, because given that these cells are going to be rated for about 1.5 volts each, and will total 4.5 volts, and white LEDs have a forward voltage of about 3 to 3.3 volts, mm, kind of not ideal. I mean, you're kind of over-volting them by about a volt and a half, almost. So, yeah, I'm not kind of surprised that they failed. I'm pretty sure they've been burnt out or over vaulted or whatever. Um, so I don't know what the designers were thinking when they made this, but it just seems like a bad design. Now given that these are just standard 5mm LEDs, 
I'm guessing they're only rated for about 20 milliamps and at 3 volts that's kind of an issue because if we check the um, short circuit current of the cells here and I'll just bring this multimeter over here um, let's prop it up so hopefully you can see the display there um, if I just well hang on let's get the 10 amp range <laughs> let's just put that on there and if I short these out with the meter you should be able to see they can supply about 500 milliamps now that's a lot more than 20 milliamps obviously so yeah driving 3 volt LEDs with 4.5 volts and no current limiting and the supply is able to give about 500 milliamps well it's not really surprising that these failed yeah one of them is escaping come back here well it's a day later not that you'd know that if I didn't tell you but anyway um, it looks like I've made a bit of a fool of myself because it turns out the LEDs aren't actually all completely dead <laughs> I've wired them up to an external power supply and if I turn them on they work just fine well not entirely fine actually um, one of them is still a bit dim and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on camera because I think it's going to be a bit too bright but these two at the bottom here are working okay I mean if I cover these um, you can see this one's maybe quite dim compared to the other two which are really bright and the dim one kind of goes bright and dim and just changes depending on what it feels like I guess at the time I'll just insert a picture of the um, LEDs I took with my other camera just in case I was able to get a better shot showing the faulty one they seem to be running quite fine by themselves uh, just on the bench here and I have got them hooked up to a bench supply running 3.3 volts to them and I do have a 5 ohm current limiting resistor so they're only getting about 20 milliamps in total so um, if I run them just on the cells directly at 4.5 volts they draw about 120 milliamps so that's going to be a lot higher current through each one and I'm thinking possibly the high voltage and higher current um, when I'm using the batteries here um, is just causing them to overheat internally or something and that's why they start flickering and going funny um, anyway but back onto the point where I confused myself now you see the torch and again I suppose you probably can't see this but um, there's a little um, maybe I can use this to show I don't know let's see <laughs> uh, there's a little ledge um, inside the torch there um, I'll see if I can get that maybe you can see this I'm not sure there's a little ledge there and I thought initially that the um, the little solder blobs they've got three little solder blobs around the um, edges of the board um, and I originally thought that those actually pushed up against that ledge and that's what made contact and completed the circuit through the torch body oh, now see they're kind of flickering again now you probably can't see that but they just flickered a little bit it's kind of weird anyway um, I originally thought these solder joints just butted up against the little lip here and completed the circuit but um, upon analyzing that I noticed that this this lip is far too far in it, it comes to about here um, and the solder joints only come to about there and you can see there's a good like five millimeter gap between the solder joints and the little lip so I don't know if they've machined that wrong or they've just designed it badly or what but the um, basically the circuit was only connected through the edges of these solder joints and the pads and basically like the bare copper on the very edge of the circuit board where it's cut so there was hardly any connection between that whatsoever um, I've since soldered a little wire little stub of wire on the side there and you probably can't see that I'll get a close-up shot and put it in um, separately but um, yeah I've, if we put that putting that on there and sticking it in allowed the LEDs to come back on when I used them in the torch so that um, issue of them all going out completely was obviously just a um, problem with the um, contacts just being completely pathetic so I don't know it really just looks like this thing is designed badly 
<laughs> I mean it's sort of got a half-assed attempt at being waterproof and then it's not and the contact is just terrible and there's no current, current limiting resistor and I don't know it's sort of weird I mean the case itself is actually really nice solid sort of aluminium and it's all machined out and it's like they've they've done I don't get it. it it's like they've they've gone to a lot of trouble to make this fairly good and then they've gotten like 80 percent 90 percent of the way and they've just failed to complete the whole thing to the high standard that they started out with I mean the end caps really nice it's got a, the o-ring and a nice big spring and it's all high quality machined and it's got a nice tough keychain thing on it and it's weird it's like they started out with the case was good and then the rest of it just the quality just went downhill and they just like didn't bother they just gave up I don't I don't understand unless the the case and the rest of it's made by different companies or something but I don't know it's just weird I mean, there's the size of the case, it can only really fit the components that are, that, that are in it. There's, there's no space, you can't really put any other battery in. I mean, I thought maybe <coughs> you could fit like an A23 12 volt cell in and then have all the LEDs in series and then have a resistor, but even that wouldn't work. The case is too short to fit an A23 and I don't know, it's just, it's just weird. The design just doesn't seem to make sense. Anyway, this thing started to flicker again, and I don't really know why. The current draw, um, you can't see, but the current draw is actually going down when it flickers, so something's breaking the connection. I don't know if it's the... I, I mean, I initially thought that maybe one of the LEDs was shorting out and just cutting power to the others by being shorted, since they're all in parallel, but the current draw is actually going down instead of up. Um, so I don't know. It, it's like there's something wrong with the connection, but I mean I've soldered these on just fine, so I don't really get it. Uh, maybe all the LEDs are just failing at once. Maybe they're so bright I can't tell that maybe only one of them's flickering. I don't really know, but um, yeah, one of them's definitely gone to like half brightness, and it, and it just goes up and down just randomly, and the other two seem okay but they flicker so basically what I'm going to do uh, to fix this I'm going to replace just all the LEDs because clearly I think these ones might have been damaged or compromised in some way and I don't think it's really worth um, trying to use any of these they're probably all wrecked but apart from this little piece of wire on the side which I'm going to use as a proper actual connection to the torch body um, my plan is to take this ring, this outer ring part and use like a spot face cutter or something to actually cut away the entire track next to where the LED leads go through on the outer track and then I'm going to tack, um, I'm gonna, well I'm going to solder a surface mount resistor um, between the little pads on the sides here and then I'm just going to bring the lead up from the new LED and over and just solder that to the end of the resistor so basically what I should have I'll cut the copper off from around here and I'll just have like the one end of the surface mount resistor will be on this pad and the other end will be just soldered directly to the lead of the LED um, I might be able to get away with putting an 8 uh, 1 8 watt resistor in there actually just a non surface mount one but I'll just see what I've got available but either way um, the idea is I'll just cut these tra tracks and shave off some of the copper underneath and I should be able to get a resistor in series with each LED and then I'll be able to have three LEDs with each with its own resistor in parallel and that should at least um, stop the over voltage, stop the over current and it should make this thing a whole lot more reliable because the basic design um, is not bad <laughs> well, it, it, it's bad, okay, the design is bad but Overall, it's not a t it's not terrible. It, it can be fixed. It can definitely be fixed with the improvement of a proper contact for the um, side bit to go on the body and resistor per LED, and it should work fine. So um, I've ordered some LEDs off eBay. I needed to buy a whole bunch of white ones anyway, so I just ordered like 200 of them, and I'll just use three of those. And um, yeah, that was like three dollars US. So. 
a pretty good deal, free shipping, everything. So I'll probably get those in about two weeks and then I'll continue this video. So um, that's it for now. Yeah, if anyone ever picks up one of these torches themselves on eBay, I don't know, I haven't looked, but I'm guessing you can buy these on eBay or something. Um, if anyone does buy one of these or has one of these and it doesn't work properly, well, hopefully um, I'll be able to show you how to get it going again. And if you just want a cheap torch, that's not too bad, actually. I mean, it's quite bright, even with two LEDs and only 20 milliamps, it's, it's quite bright. Um, definitely good for a little inspection torch which is what I plan to use it for. So there we have it, the uh, torch that almost was, but not really. Um, weird engineering design choices by someone in China, I suspect, and I don't really know why it's so bad, but hopefully we can fix that. And yeah, LEDs, eBay, China, two weeks. Hopefully, I'll be back and I'll be able to get this thing up to some sort of standard that makes it actually usable. <laughs>